European heavyweight grapplers face off on the main card of UFC 278. We have the former M1 Global heavyweight champ. He's a 15-fight UFC veteran. It's Marcin Tybor Tybora taking on King Kong. Now you're gone. It's Alexander Romanov. He's undefeated as a pro. And he had one chintzy little fight against former Ultimate Fighter winner Juan Espino, which went his way by way of technical decision because you can't knee a, na a guy to the gonads and Juan found that one out the hard way. Split technical decision by way of Alexander Romanov. He was a minus 2,200 favorite in his last fight against a short notice Chase Sherman who had just been cut like from the organization. But uh, yeah, Alexander Romanov went in, took him down, grabbed his arm, yanked on it, and Chase went tapity tap tap tap. So for Alexander Romanov, I said this from the start of the show. If you don't watch the intro, you miss out on the good parts. If you're a bantamweight or a flyweight looking to get a sweat on a Tiger Muay Thai in a cardio kickboxing class, and you see Alexander Romanov has been training out a Tiger Muay Thai here recently, do you turn and walk the other way? I wouldn't mess with him. No? No, not You sure? Not. You wouldn't mess a with A terrifying him. man. Well, for Alexander Romanov, a guy who has a sumo background, in 2000 and, uh, what was it, 2016, he was a silver medalist at the Open European Championships. Romanov is a different guy. He's a different cat. The level of competition that he faced coming into the UFC wasn't all that great, but you got to see glimpses of a guy who... Wings punches from weird angles as a southpaw. He was willing to throw a lot more kicks when he was fighting before he came into the UFC. But in the UFC, he's really gone to where his bread is buttered. And he's gone for the takedowns over and over and over again. And for Romanov, obviously, again, 16-0 and is the record. Five UFC fights, 16 takedowns. He's fourth all-time in UFC history of control time at 70.7% of his fights. Top percentage time, six all-time ever. Any division. 53.4% takedown accuracy, 8th all-time at 69.6%. But that weird southpaw kind of thing that he has going for him really does kind of trip up a lot of his opponents. And the only resistance we've seen is in that fight against Juan Espino where Romanov looked pretty good in the first round. The Senegalese wrestler out of the Canary Islands in Spain looked good in the second round. And then in the third round, Espino looked pretty good there too technical decision Romanov ends up getting the win but other than that he's looked great for Tybora nine and six in the UFC had a five fight win streak with two performance of the night bonuses against Greg Hardy and Walt Harris going into his fight against Alexander Volkov and in that fight both guys looked like they had nothing in the tank the whole time and it was not fun to watch on the rewatch for this one this is a really weird comp to make but it sort of came to me in the moment Mercer Nabora reminds me of the evolution of Shaquille O'Neal from the Orlando Magic to the LA Lakers and please let me explain why he was an equally dominant player, for instance, between those two different tenures, but what was the difference? He slowed down over time and found a way to make the slowness work for him. Shaquille O'Neal's one of the top Craig. three players in NBA history. Marcin no, he's Tybor not. He's is nine and six in Craig. the UFC. How about you listen to the words I say and not just the player that I'm comparing him to? Shaq was very mobile and very fast early on in his career. And I gotta be honest, Marcin Nabor's striking at an earlier stage of his career was a lot faster and a lot more explosive at a certain point. He was a fighter who could throw head kicks from different angles. He had a lot more in terms of longer range techniques. Whereas at this point of his career, it does feel like he has slowed down and regressed somewhat in his striking. Now, he has been able to make sort of his plodding forward style work in different ways. He can still have success in this division, but there was once a time where Marcin Nabora almost takes Fabrice Super Doom with a left high kick in the fifth round of a main event. Like, that does show a high level of striking for a guy who has seemed a lot flat-footed as of late. So that's where the comparison comes into. He can still be successful, but he doesn't necessarily look at this as or look like the same fighter he once was. To put it into like fighting terms, Derek Brunson kind of had a similar uh, technique turn, where Derek Brunson went from being like, hey, you don't want to strike with this guy at all on the feet, and now he's still dangerous don't get me wrong but now there's other guys out there who can definitely outstrike Derek Brunson you're not really as confident with him as a striker but he's found other ways to make his game work now he relies a little bit more on his wrestling his cardio is a little bit iffy and that's what you worry about but still these are fighters who were once something and fought in a certain way who now still maintain the same similarities as that fighter but they have had to find way or find ways to make their strengths just work in separate ways I think Tabor is gonna have to use his clinch a lot in this fight which is weird to say because Romanov is so 
strong in that position, but I do think the size of Tabora is going to come into play at some point. Romanov isn't the same guy he was when he first came into the UFC. I don't know how he made 265. He was built like a big Brock Lesnar type at some point. Like, not muscle-bound, but just a guy that you almost couldn't believe weighed in at 265. He was that big. He is a lot smaller now in this division, and you can look at that in two different ways. Maybe that helps his cardio. Maybe that helps his pressure and his pace. But on the flip side, maybe he is going to struggle a little bit more with some of these bigger, stronger grapplers in the division. But I am really happy that we've seen this step up in competition from Romanov. I think it was really needed in his career, and I think Marcin DeBoer is a great guy for him to fight. Well, in Romanov's fight against Jared Van Der, where Romanov was a big favorite, not to the minus... 2200 when he fought Chase Sherman. Romanov, between round one and round two, looked pretty damn tired. And then he went right back out there, earned the takedown. He's able to get the finish. And for Marcin Tybora, he tried to initiate that clinch, really long kind of tiring game plan or of attack against Alexander Volkov. He went 0-16 on takedown attempts, wasn't able to get it to the mat against Thick Volkov. He didn't have an answer for the in-betweens, which was something he was good at. And that's why I bring up the comp. Like, Tabora at one point, I'm not joking, was like a good kickboxer in the UFC. Maybe good is a bit of a stretch, but like, he had pops on his shots, he had good footwork, there was a bounce to him, and that just seems to be totally eliminated. And he does train out of Ankos MMA, which is a very, very good gym. You've had a lot of prospects come out of that gym. But for Marcin Tybora, the big thing is, if somebody goes to take him down, he can rest on his laurels. Well, he shouldn't in this fight. But I have 82% takedown defense, the best in UFC heavyweight history. I have three hours, eight minutes, and or, sorry, three hours, five minutes, and 18 seconds of cage time in the UFC. Ninth most in heavyweight history. More than Alistair Overeem for Marcin Tybora inside of a UFC Alistair, cage. He got him done fit quick, though. Wild stuff there. But when it does come down to this matchup for Romanov, it's the bigger movements. For Marcin Tybora, we do know that he has good cardio, even at 36 years of age, almost 37. It's Would been you, a hallmark of his game. This is a uniquely bad matchup for Romanov, though. Like, I know his success is going to come from the areas that probably Tabora is going to invite. Like, he's going to have to clinch at some point. He's probably going to have to grapple himself. But I do think that if Romanov can't get the first takedown, well, he probably won't get the second. He probably won't get the third. I really do think he's going to have to rely on a lot of early success to just stifle the forward and, movement of Tabora. And Tybora is the type of weird heavyweight where he can kind of just get up and earn that sweep off the bottom so good opportunity for Tybora in this matchup the odds Tybora open a plus 205 plus 267 or thereabouts for Romanov open minus 240 minus 343 his cardio always scares me I've been a big Romanov guy in the past or at least a watcher from afar we have a look at the topology vote surprise to us there to you Man, the fans don't like Marcin Tybora and they like Alexander Romanov I'm gonna say over under 90% Romanov I'll say over Topology fans are weird. 842 votes, 81% Romanov, 20% by decision, 39% by submission, 34% by knockout. For the 19% that I have Tybora, 74% by decision. I've never seen a more meathead choke since Frank Mir toe-holded Tank Abbott after he didn't want to fight no pretty boy. Like, that was the, the most meathead thing I've ever seen. Until Alexander Romanov went, you know what? Forearm choke against Rogerio de Lima. It's kind of dagster though. And it worked. Uh, Matt, this matchup, we talked about it a lot. Obviously, Tybora has the in-cage experience against some very, very good fighters in the UFC. He has a winning record in the UFC. He's not one of the all-timers, but he is on some all-time lists in terms of just stats on a He's page. He's somebody's favorite fighter. Some weird old gal in Poland. Yeah, like, uh, but that's the thing. Like, he might not be someone who's remembered throughout history all the time, but, like, there's people out there who really there like Marcin Tabora fight. There goes my hero. Yeah. Watch, Watch Tybora roll. Pretty much. Now, like, he was an entertaining guy. He's been around for a long time. I do think he is a uniquely poor matchup for Romanov, but I said the same thing about Jordan Levitt before he fought Patty Pimblett. Patty Pimblett pretty much ran him over by the time the fight was all said and done. So, I do still like Alexander Romanov in this matchup because again Tabor is not really going to make him work for the areas that Romanov can have success in. Romanov does have to work to get into the clinch against a lot of guys whereas Tabor I think will welcome that position and I don't favor anybody in those sort of over under positions in the division over Romanov so I'm still going to pick King Kong but I think this is a very fun fight. I was kind of hoping in the Yes Theory video where they travel to Moldova that they'd end up meeting like Alexander Romanov or Sergei Smivok. In the woods wrestling a bear? But instead they found an old guy with a cast and they took him to the beach so 
So it was still fun, but when I look at this matchup, Alexander Romanov with those power takedowns, with Tiger Muay Thai in his back pocket, I'm eager to see what he does with the striking because think about it, higher weight classes, Nikita Krylov used to train out of Tiger Muay Thai and he's a pretty damn fun fighter. So I'm eager to see what I get out of Romanov. This is the toughest test to date in the UFC and I hope that we get a King Kong win out of this one. That's my pick on this one, going with Moldova's King Kong Romanov to get the win. We're in agreement on the pick. Let us know down below in the comment section if you have Tybora to get the win, if you have Romanov, if you're along for the main card and the Fight Night Pick sidekick on Saturday night. We have some big-time fights. You're going to want to keep it locked in with Fight Night Picks. We always say, let's get into 